Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by dentalwebcontent.com and New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Hey, Howie. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. We, uh, what do you want to talk about today? Well, we're, the series is moving forward. We briefly went through the three pillars of every solid marketing plan for every dental practice. They were internal promotion, the internet, and some form of offline direct targeted promotion, which in our world means direct mail. So right. why don't we talk, we talked about social media last time, probably get into websites next time. Let's talk about direct mail, the different forms of direct mail, when to use each, how to use each, and how to target each. And most important, I guess I might as well start out with why they are so dang successful. Right, right. Um, I think there's a trend in dentistry. Um, I think there's a trend, at least by some, a belief that all new patients are are garnered from the internet solely. I think about 10 years ago, that was probably 20% of dentists. And then over the years, about 100% of them believe that they're going to go get all their new patients just from investing in the internet. And they will get some. But the problem is, not the problem, the, the reality is, is that Every website property on the internet became successful through offline promotion. Right. eBay, Amazon, Google itself, Yahoo, the Dell guy, right? Right. Uh, WebMD. I guarantee you never didn't hear about WebMD by typing in some uh, medical malady into Google. You saw WebMD and you found it because you saw it on TV or you saw it in a magazine or you listened to it or you heard the advertisement on the radio. And then you went there. So all other commerce in the world is a combination of online and offline. And if you go back to our three pillars of the perfect marketing plan for a dental office, you remember we said internal, internet, and some form of targeted local offline promotion. Now, the key word there is targeted, and this will segue nicely into why dental, why direct mail done properly is king and why it will never be knocked off its throne for all you Game of Thrones fans out there. Direct mail is king if done properly because you can target direct mail better than any other promotion medium available. When I mean, when I say targeting, what that means is, and this this is what it should mean in your mind, save me money, reduce my risk. The more targeted your advertising is, the more it gets targeted over time, the lower your risk and the lower your cost per new patient will be. It just makes sense okay if you paid for radio advertising 
for a radio station, let's say the radio station was actually physically right next door to your office. Let's say it's the best possible case scenario and the radio was broadcasting in a perfect 25 mile circle and your practice was right in the dead center of that enormous 25 mile circle. Well, the problem is, okay, nobody is listening to this podcast has that scenario, okay? The second problem is, is nobody that there is, the only way you can target through radio is geography and listener profile. Right. They don't call it a broadcast for nothing. Right. It's a, right. It's a, it's, it's, it's a classic carpet bomb. Okay. You know, you throw like 9 billion bombs out of an airplane and you just hope one or two hit whatever the building is that you're looking for. That's how we did it in the old days. That's not how we do it now. Now, how do we, now we can put a bomb in the back pocket of anyone we want to anywhere on the planet because of what? Because of proper targeting. Right. Less collateral damage, less cost, less everything. Okay, okay. Let's skip the war analogy here. Yeah. All right. You're gonna listen. I know, I know. Yeah, it wasn't a great way for me to go, but hopefully the listeners get the idea. Yeah. Okay. Direct mail is king. It is the king of the seven kingdoms, it, and nobody's going to knock it off its throne because. You can't target radio that way. You can't target the print media that way. You can't target, oh, for Google PPC, forget it. You can't target that, tar target that at all, hardly. Facebook is getting close, but as it pertains to dentistry, you can't come close. When, when, if you want to send the message about the benefits of the dentistry you provide, the benefits of the conveniences and the technology and your public relations assets, if you want to bundle all that up and get that in the hands of the right people within a reasonable distance of your practice who can afford your services, who have a credit rating worthy enough to qualify for financing if they need it to get their dental services done with a with a, a good quality marketing marketing index rating you can't you can't duplicate that targeting anywhere in any other medium other than direct mail okay and the, what I just described is exactly the way we target our direct mail campaigns so if, if you, you happen to look at our advertising or log on to Dental Town or maybe you're on Facebook and in one of the forums on there about dentistry and you listen and you hear people, doctors talking about NPI, I've been with them for five years, eight years, seven years, 14 years, 19 years, okay? They're not all in direct mail, but what do you think, Howie? You think 95% of them are in direct mail? At yeah, least? I do. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We handle the other aspects of their marketing as well. We handle their internet. We handle all the other stuff. But I bet 95% of them are in direct mail. And one of the main reasons they're still with us is because we're still generating a good solid ROI. And the way we generate, part of the way we generate that solid ROI is through the way we do direct mail. So if you're sitting out there thinking, I'm going to put 100% of my marketing dollar into the internet, just take half of it and flush it down the toilet because okay. that'll save you a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of grief. That's not the way WebMD did it. It's not the way Amazon did it. It's not the way Dell did it. N nobody, even Google doesn't. Google still spends money offline. Oh, I get, I get Google uh, direct mail pieces all the time. There isn't, right. There isn't a person on the planet that doesn't know who Google is, but they still right. promote offline, right? Right. So, so, oh, okay. so the the bottom line to today's podcast is, if you're going to choose an offline promotion strategy near your office, it has to be direct mail. It has to be direct mail because it's the only medium you can target this way. Dental, good, solid dental patients require that targeting because if you carpet bomb them, your costs are, you know, are well, could be prohibited, right? If you if you mail that thing to everyone that exists in your local market, 
then basically you're, you've raised your cost 50 to 60% and you didn't need to. If you target it properly, you can send twice as much for the same amount of money, but to the right people. So now the, the different methods, there's three basic direct mail types, postcards, what we call trifolds or quadfolds, you can call them brochure types. They look like brochures and magazines. Each one has its place. Each one will generate a very predictable statistical result. And I'll go through each now. If you mail a postcard or if you even design a postcard to be mailed to your local community, you have to use some kind of an aggressive financial incentive. If you've listened to us at all, anywhere, read any of our books, listened to us in any seminar, done any business with us ever, then you know that's not our first choice to you, for you. However, we do understand that there are some circumstances where it can't be avoided. You have to use a price incentive to generate phone calls uh, in some circumstances. And, and if I might interject here, that's, that can also lead to a, uh, uh, an influx of, of a lot of calls right away. They're not going to be necessarily high quality calls, but the phone will ring. And that's basically because you don't have a lot of room on a postcard to talk about anything else except some deals, right? Exactly. So, exactly. And it, it, it's, uh, it's like Mark said, it's not our first choice for our clients, but sometimes it's necessary depending on the situation that they're in. Maybe they're a startup. Right. And, and they need something like that. Or they need a boost of uh, volume of new patients in a short period of time. Right, they just took on a new, a new associate. A new associate, yeah. right. Yeah. There's lots of situations where you would temporarily use them, but around the country, you see dentists relying on them continually. Yeah, um, year after year after year. Year after, right, here's the problem, okay? The problem is, that they, and, and I'm sure they don't know this, but somewhere between months 29 and 33 in an average market with an average dentist, with an average scope, with everything averaged, the dentist who's doing that on a continual basis will start to see a decline. Well, they may not start to see it, but they'll start to pay for the decline. So they're going to pay and pay and pay as the bell curve goes on the downside. And it will, in exactly that month, in exactly those months, in an average market, with an average dentist, with an average scope, and an average, average everything, if you continually use postcards and deals to the bottom half of the dental market, sooner or later, you're gonna start running out of targets. And as you run out of viable targets, because not every mom, remember, or go back to the previous podcast, way back in this series, where we said half the moms will choose a healthcare provider based on price and half won't. You use postcards to go after the half that will choose based on a price incentive. You use the trifolds, the brochure types, to go after the moms who won't choose a healthcare provider based primarily on price, okay? You can do both simultaneously, but you have to target the audience appropriately and you never cross those streams. It's like uh, Ghostbusters. Remember they fired up their little ghost weapons and they said, don't cross the streams, okay? This is absolutely true when you're doing promotion to the middle half and promotion to the top uh, uh, simultaneously for a dental client. You don't you don't send the the brochure type to the moms who are most likely going to choose someone based on a, a price incentive. All you have to send that mom is a postcard. So then we get to the third option, which is which the the magazines that we that we produce they're they're pretty much only going to the top 10, maybe top 20% of the local market. And they're really only used when a dentist comes to us and says, you know what, I'm 50, 55, whatever, 60 years old. The general nuts and bolts, bread and butter side of my practice is kicking along really well. 
And um, I still got a good 10 years in me and I want to enjoy it. And I want to do more fun dentistry. I want to do more implants, more sleep apnea, more Invisalign, more six month smiles, more whatever, whatever the doctor likes doing the most. Normally in that scenario, we will, well, let me back up. We will never just do magazines. The doctor has to be doing something else to keep the bread and butter flow going. Okay. So the magazines are used to augment, to drive incredibly high value new patients into a practice. That's where you would use um, the eight page magazines. In that case, you have a cover and a back and you have six pages in, in the middle. And each one of those pages is devoted to one of the cool pieces of dentistry that you, you prefer to do, you prefer to spend your time doing. It might be implants, it might be implant supported dentures, it might be cosmetic dentures, it could be sleep apnea, it could be, I don't know how, it could be anything, right? Yeah, yeah, smile makeovers. Sure, smile makeovers, anything, right? So, so you, and then we create a page for each and produce it and send it out. Now these, don't get you large volumes of responses. However, the average revenue per patient on these is enormous. These people are ready to buy. These are the people who, if you don't answer your phone, they call you back. These are the people who walk in and say to the doctor, hi doctor, I'm interested in X. They tell you what they're interested in because you showed them what they should be interested in. So those are the three levels of direct mail. Direct mail is the king and will continue to be the king and nothing is gonna knock it off its perch. Um, as far as uh, the best local offline promotion to choose, um, expectations should be, uh, if you, if you use direct mail via postcard, your expectation should be that you must use some call to action, or some price incentive or multiple price incentives to get the phone to ring. If the phone rings and the patients come in, um, they will be a lower quality, uh, but they will be a higher volume. So there's an offset, there's a pro and a con there. You will get more calls initially. Um, if you uh, choose the brochure type, trifolds, quadfolds, um, and you promote, let's say, to the top 40% of your local market, you'll get fewer phone calls than the postcards got, but your average revenue per patient will be three or four times higher in the first year, 11 times greater. Uh, over the lifetime of the patient. And if you use magazines in, in, in conjunction with other offline promotion, um, the call volume on the magazines is relatively low. Most people that do those campaigns, they're concerned about the call volume, but then they, then they realize, <laughs> then they realize Holy cow, these people are coming in for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of work. <laughs> I, I don't really need a whole bunch of these, you know? So yeah, yeah, really. They, these are unbelievable, unbelievable new patients. I mean, doctors, they, they don't even really believe it anymore. You know, it, it's like uh, you you can say, Well, gee, I only got fourteen phone calls from from the last met magazine mailing you guys did for me. And uh, uh, okay. 14 of uh, super qualified people who actually called you and if they couldn't reach you they called you back right uh, exactly pretty high exactly. quality patient there you know yeah or they called and said yeah i i'd, I'd like to make my appointment for my dental implants please yeah <laughs> i you don't even have to talk to them about it you don't have to talk them into it they're already talked into it right all you have to do is answer the phone and say yes so yeah no so there anyway so, so as far as direct mail is concerned, those are the three levels. 
you use, you, think of the three levels as tools. One's a screwdriver, one's a hammer, and the other one's a, a um, I don't know, a, a shovel. So depending on the situation, depending on where you are in your practice, depending on what you need to get done, you pull one of these tools out and you use it. If you need a, a high volume of patients just to fill holes in a schedule, you might try postcards for a period of time. Once you get to your capacity or near your capacity, you might say, you know what, I'm going to go to the brochure type, get a, a few fewer new patients, but great new patients. And then once you get to that point, 50, 55 years old, and you want to do more cool stuff, more big case type stuff, you might say, you know what, I'm going to do the trifolds and I'm going to do the magazines to get myself some more, you know, some bigger cases. The bottom line is, is if you deploy those dependent upon where you are in your practice, along with good internal promotion and a good internet strategy, and 90% of the people, Dennis, listening to this podcast will never have to go outside of those three things, <laughs> ever. They won't have to go to print ads, radio, television. They won't have to take these wild risks. No, nothing, uh, nothing we are talking about is risky. Really. I mean, it's the, the risk actually is not doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Howie, you have anything else to anything else to add? Yeah, yeah, just just a little bit. I mean, uh, it, it's it's tempting uh, to for dentists to go, oh well, nobody reads junk mail anymore. They just throw it all away. And I just want to address this quickly. Yeah, that's true. But the percentage, although small, of people who will open it and look at it and then will respond although a very small percentage, is enough to be wildly pr profitable for you. You only need a few good cases for every mailing, and you, you've remade your money right there. The rest is gravy, and the rest is referrals from these people, and the rest is more work from these people later on, and it's a gift that just keeps on giving. So it isn't about junk mail. It's about we don't care about those people who don't open it. We don't want them anyway. Right. We just want the ones who do open it and who will respond. And and there's there's a there's a pile of good patients just sitting there, uh, you know, using direct mail. Right. And then those it's patients, years. the big pile of patients who are just sitting there are patients who are getting postcards with deals from all your competitors every day. And exactly. they're the moms who won't choose a, a healthcare provider based on those postcards and those deals. Those moms are just sitting there waiting for someone to come talk to them on their level. Right. They're just waiting for some, for a dentist to say or to communicate, well, I'm not going to lead with a deal. I'm going to lead with the benefits of the dentistry and the technology and the conveniences and the public relations assets I have and maybe – I'm close to your house and maybe, you know, um, I, I might participate with Delta, right? Then my, those moms are going to choose you based on that. So the, the, the moms in your market who are being barraged endlessly by deals is not necessarily a bad thing for the dentist who says, aha, what if I don't communicate deals? What if I communicate the benefits of dentistry and I target it properly and I do it on a consistent basis? I'll be the one who gets those moms. Exactly. So that's that's it. That's direct mail. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark. It's uh, good to have been with you again. Uh, sure. We will uh, we'll see you all out in the audience again soon. Bye. -bye. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can find more podcasts on our YouTube channel, on Stitcher, and iTunes. Also on our websites, dentalwebcontent.com and newpatientsinc.com.